So in this video I'm going to talk about how you can build your own ICT model. But before we get into the video, if you'd like to engage with other traders, you can join my Discord link in the description is totally free. So now let's get into the video. So how are we going to build our own ICT model? So first of all, we want to use some of the PDRAs that we were very experienced within using. So let's just say I'm very good at using fairly gaps. So in that case, I'm going to use fairly gaps or just something that you are very great at using in real time. So let's say I want to see, first of all, buy sell liquidity to be ran because then we can get a confirmation for lower prices. So that's one of the criteria that I want for my model. And then I also want to see a, let's just say a market structure shift for more confirmation. And then after I got these two confirmations, then I want to enter off a fairly gap. So that's just an example of how you can combine some of the concepts and create your model. So when trying to find your model, I think you should considering having between two and nine rules within your model. So the reason I think you should do that is because let's just say you have one rule and whenever price takes out by sell liquidity or sell sell liquidity, let's just say we have a one minute high up here, then you will short immediately. So in that case, I think personally, I think that is too short. Um, of course, you could get uh, great uh, risk reward ratio trades with this, but still, personally, I want to have at least like two confirmations the price is willing to move lower from the buy side liquidity. And I also think you shouldn't have too many rules uh, within your model. So I think between two and nine rules within your model is fine. Uh, of course, if you have more and it works for you, you should, of course, still do that. But in in my case, I think nine is enough for me because then personally, I think it's going to be too overwhelming when looking for a model because you have to have at least nine confirmation confirmations and that is a lot in my opinion. So between two and nine, that's a great number of rules within your model. So now I'm going to go into the charts and find some examples of what a model could look like and also to give you inspiration to your own model. So just here short for a first example, we we'll see the price created a balanced price range. As you see, we get a fast move down and a fast move up where we both created a inversion fairly gap and we created a fairly gap. So in that case, this is a balanced price range. So when we have this kind of balanced price range, this is a PDRA. So this is one of the rules in this model. So let's just say the first rule is we want to see a balanced price range. So second up, we can see right here the price is delivering from a further gap. So that could be our second rule. So a third rule could be targeting internal range liquidity or just buy side liquidity. So let's just, just in case we have up here, we have a old high. So then let's say if we were to take a trade entry based off this balanced price range, we could enter either at the top or at the consequent encouragement. So let's just say we want to enter the consequent encouragement, then we must put our stop loss at the slow and then target either this old high up here or internal risk liquidity. So in that case, it makes, makes a 1.7 risk reward ratio. So if you want to be a rule that you want to have at least two risk reward ratio, then you could write that down. So let's just say we want to at least have two risk reward ratio. And then the third rule could be targeting interim risk liquidity or a, any form of old high. So right here, we have almost all the criteria other than the two risk reward ratio. So in that case, let's just target up here if we had to do anything and that will make it 3.2 risk reward ratio. So that's how we could build up your own model. So let's see how this would look in live action. So now let's just say we're in the live markets 
and we want to see price delivering from any form of peter ray. So in this case, let's just say we want to see price delivering from peter ray within a discount. In that case, it would be this one right here. And of course, that could also be a criteria if you want to use that. But I'm just going to use this peter ray right here, as it is within the discount. So now I want to see price go down into this further gap right here and then start delivering from that, creating a balanced price range. So right here we see price taps down into a bullish value gap, which is a busy. So now I want to see a balanced price range happen. So I want to see price close above this CV right here. And right here we get it closed above the CB and we also create a further gap within the meantime. So this right here would be the balanced price range. So now I want to see price make a retracement into the consequent encouragement or just at the top. It depends on which you want to see. So let's just say we want to see it at the consequent encouragement and then we want to put our stop loss maybe at this low or just a place where we think price would most likely invalidate the idea of the balance price range. So this could, of course, also be a rule. And then we want to target any form of old high or internal range liquidity. So let's say we're to enter right here and then put our stop loss this low down here and then target this old high up here. So let's see what happens. Right here, price failed to stop us out, and now we're starting to see expansion to the upside. And right here, we see price reacts off the balance price range, and then we get a move up to the old high. So some of the things we used right here is, the, first of all, we want to see a balance price range. Second, Price must deliver from any form of PDRA or, in this case, a FLA gap. And third, at least two risk reward ratio. So, as we see, we had that right here. And fourth, target internal range liquidity slash any form of old high up here. And fifth, good stop loss placement. As we see right here, we had a stop loss placement where price didn't stop us out as it didn't invalidate the balance price range or disrespect the balance price range. So that's just a quick example of how a model could look like. So another example of a model could be the inversion value gap model. And I would definitely recommend watching the video I made about that because it would probably give you some inspiration on how you should build your own model. So now I'm just going to give you a short example. So right here we see this value gap is within a discount, which I'd like to see. So First, the first rule is price must deliver from any form of Peter Ray or take out so so liquidity. So in this case, we are in the Peter Ray. So then we go into the one minute because we see the five minute is delivering from. And then we want to look for the first singular inversion fairly gap. And what do we have right here? We have a singular inversion fairly gap. And we see price inverses that and then makes a retracement. So we could just yellow and then we see price makes a retracement into this inversion of value gap and this is a singular inversion of value gap which is also a criteria so if we were to take a trade entry we could enter right when price touches it and then inversion of value gap and then put our stop loss we'll just do right here which is a pretty safe place and then target in terms of liquidity which is up here. So that's also just a quick example on a model. So just the five rules for the inversion value gap model, which I'm not going to go that much in details, it, but the first one, price must deliver from any form of Peter Ray or take out buy side liquidity or sell side liquidity. Second, it has to be a singular inversion value gap. Third, target internal range liquidity slash external range liquidity. Fourth, has to be obvious strong liquidity. And fifth, internal range liquidity slash external range liquidity must not be ran before we make the retracement. But when you have your model and you want to practice it, you have to practice it both when price is in a buy program and in a sell program. Because if you only practice when price is bullish 
and you only find bullish setups of your model, you're not going to easily spot your model when price is bearish. So that you have to keep in mind both practicing when price is in a sell program and in a buy program. So I would definitely recommend having bias as an extra thing on your list of rules as it is important to trade your model on the right side. So let's say we're bullish, then it's great to, tr to trade your model in a long. So in this case, let's just say for this inversion value model, on the higher time frame we were bullish, so my bias was bullish in that case. So in that case, I want to find a bullish inversion value model. So that's just an extra thing I would definitely recommend having within your rules. But of course, if you trade on the one minute, it's a bit different as right here, this all this bearish movement or bearish momentum right here, it would look like on the 15 minute, just a short retracement before we get a buy side of the curve. So in that case, of course, you could trade your model on the one minute without bias, but I am definitely recommend still having bias on your side when trading your model. So that was it for this video, and I hope you liked it. And if you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And if there is any form of question that you have, or if there's any kind of ICC concept that you want to learn more about, just comment down below. And if you'd like to engage with other traders, you can join my Discord link in the description. It's totally free.